कैसे मतलब हाउ इफ आई हैव ट्रांसलेट हाउ डू यू स्टडी नोट्स नोट्स नहीं ऐसे-ऐसे यू शुड नॉट ओनली डिपेंड ऑन नोट्स यू हैव टू हियर द टेक्स्ट फॉर दैट थिंग मींस आई हेट द नोट्स पढ़ना बहुत जरूरी है यू 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 हैव 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 टू 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 रीड इफ गेट कैन मेक नोट्स आंसरिंग क्वेश्चंस ऑफ कोर्स बट ड्यूरिंग एन एग्जाम और व्हेन आर रिवाइजिंग नोट्स पढ़ के मत जाओ बिकॉज़ नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स Provided you know, and for knowing you have to revise. You don't have to write big, big, long, long answers. Just writing one mark, uh, one word, one sentence, you are getting marks. But for one word, one sentence, you need to you have to strike. And also, in this chapter, minimum two, three times revision, very important. And you need to remember so many things and subjects also so many at the same time. Okay, no, my, in my work, uh, in my exam, there was one question which gave one out and one justified reason for calling. One? Or one out and the justified reason for calling. So, there was one question where we have all one out. Between pieces, uh, mammalia, tails, reptiles. So, when the answer was, I am told this is mammalia. What I am going to work, why is it? Pieces, pieces. amphibia, ah. mammalia, reptiles, tails. So what is the answer? Amphibia, reptiles, apes, mammalia. Ha. So ma'am, ma'am. What was the question? Or one or two pick? Or one. So ma'am, I chose amphibia since due to the reasons they believe both partial on land and partial in water. The rest are covering it as to water or some in land. But actually, also is mammalia. For what reason that? So what your teacher gave the reason? No, my teacher gave the reason. So you are asking me? You did not ask your teacher? I asked her like why is it wrong? So now this is all the answers I am giving. Answer is mammalia, and answer will be mammalia. Answer is mammalia. That's correct. Why? Because rest of all the four groups are egg-laying, egg-laying types. Oviparous, mammalia, viviparous, giving birth to young ones. Mammalia, most of the species except for few. If I talk about the anteater, all of these are exceptions in mammalia, mammals. But majority of the organisms belonging to this group are viviparous, giving birth to young ones. But if I talk about eggs, birds, egg laying, no, oviparous, reptiles egg laying, amphibians egg laying, fishes egg laying, all are oviparous. Understood? That's it. Which chapter now we are supposed to start? अच्छा Now, five kingdom classification. You are you are done with the terms. Yes, ma'am. For you all, no. No. For Ryan, no. No seven. For seven phase one, that. And for you all, it's done. Yeah, yeah. For terms, we have done. Ah. So now you tell me what are the common chapters, and I have to start with the common chapter first, and then separately we will have to take a part. What? So now you give me a fair idea. अच्छा तो अभी क्या है? Are you sure about your chapters now for the second term? Yeah, we have that. चलो बोलो बोलते जाओ. This is Sadhu Master. No, not short form. That is where it will start. अच्छा ठीक है. Anyways, roughly तुम chapter बोलो because now I will start only with the common chapter in the class. And separate requirements will have to take later. That we have to take a hold. Bolo, digestive system, locomotion, movement, locomotion. Then, then, then. Respiratory system. Hygiene. 
This is in January. February. Yeah. Yeah. February. Yeah. Now this is seven day, no? No, my sadhu. Sadhu asani. Seven day sadhu asani. How many of you? Chaar. My majority. Majority ka matlab pata hai? To majority to tum log ye log to khali chaar jan hai. Or baaki sab seven day. So abhi seven day bata. Respiration in plant. Respiration in plants. Diversity in the living organism. Diversity. Economic importance. Are you home? Diversity. Economic importance. Economic. What about this side? Economic importance was done in the previous. It was there. Acha. Next. Nutrition. Nutrition. Nutrition in animals. Hmm? Nutrition in animals. Those are love chapter that we do. Love chapter. Nutrition and then nutrition oh. in animals. Okay. Okay. Bolo aage. This much in second term. Then you have got a third term also. This is half year in December. Third term. This is December. Yes. Then you will just have finals. For finals, what will be your portion? So I'll write in 11, 12, 13. So I'll teach 11, 12, 13 only. So this you are saying in December, no? Yes. This is in December, roughly. So it's been common. What is common? It's not common. It's not common. It's not common. अभी आगे बोलो थर्ड टर्म नो दिस इस थर्ड टर्म थर्ड टर्म कब है दिसंबर दिसंबर दिस एग्जाम आल्सो दिसंबर दिस एग्जाम इन दिसंबर देन वी विल जस्ट हैव फाइनल फेब्रुअरी हाँ तो की फेब्रुअरी नहीं बोलना है बोलो पास 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 डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम हाँ मूवमेंट्स एंड लोगों के हाँ स्किन में तो जैक ऑफ ऑल चीज़ हाँ उसके बाद रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम हाँ हेल्थ एंड हाइजीन ओके एड्स टू हेल्थ हाँ हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हाइजीन एड्स एंड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो बेसिकली दिस पार्ट एंड दिस पार्ट फॉर यू ऑल इस एंड दिस यू ऑल नीड टाइम जिसमें कॉमन तो you all have finished with nutrition. Yes. No, we did it by us. All, all the time. No, no. In the term already over. Yeah, First term time. already over. Yeah. So now, what I can do is, and your exams are when you said? January. Jan. Jan. This one is in January. Ah, January, mid of January, February. So what I'll do now is I'll start with this one. Because ये जो चैप्टर्स अभी बचा है, दिस इस कंपैरेटिवली अ सिंपलर चैप्टर। ये तीन थोड़ा डिटेल है, देन आई हैव टू पुट इट फॉरवर्ड व्हाट टू डू। क्योंकि दिस चैप्टर जो ना टीच नाउ इन द क्लास इट्स फॉर साधु वास्तव में इट्स नो यूज़ नो। राइट नाउ क्योंकि ये चैप्टर्स अभी तुमको what you will do is we'll start with digestive system. Then first, in class we shall learn five kingdom classification and it is half length. Yes. Acha. So five kingdom to sadhu. You all don't need to sadhu. Sadhu was not needed. So in that case, five kingdom classification I have to do it later. I'll I'll tell you what. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. Okay. Let me just get it here because now the topics that I have to take up should be a common topic. What I teach should be applicable to all the students in the class. So I'm going to start with digestive system because you also need, they also need more or less at the same time. You also need roughly around February, February, you also need at the February. They also need more or less at the same time. So let us start with that chapter. I have it. 
written down. I'll put it forward and let's see what we can. Like the other time we had no some maybe separate time we'll have to plan for you all and then cover up your portions. Uh, your exam you said in December you said no December yes seven December you said. Then just for any year portion be cut and done for it. Chalo. We start with digestive system. Now, when I talk about digestive system. Certain things that we first of all should understand. What is digestion? Food stuffs, nutrients. Of course. When I start teaching digestive system, the concept of nutrition should first come. But uh, since nutrition uh, is no more there for them, so I will just take a basic idea about nutrition right here. So when we are talking about nutrition, what is the basic concept of nutrition? What is nutrition? So to understand this, first of all, let us talk about this word, food stuffs. What do you understand by the word food stuffs? Food stuffs, matlab. Results of substance which we eat on regular basis. Food items, food stuffs. Give me five uh, names of food items. Rice, meat, bread. Dal, dal, cereals, cereals, nuts, grains, fruits. So these are food food items. Now in these food items we have got different types of chemical components. Mm. The different type of chemical components present in the food. This is what is nutrient. So now, when I talk about the word nutrients, basically I talk about nutrients. Then, uh, what is the meaning of the word nutrients? First of all, to understand what are nutrients. Uh, nutrients are chemical substances. These are chemical substances present in food stuffs. Chemical substances which are present in the food stuffs. Now, these chemical substances which are present in the foodstuffs may be of different types. Chemical substances present in foodstuffs may be of different types. What are those? They may be organic. organic. They may be inorganic. So now that I talk about organic, what am I understanding? Organic se kya samaj bhi aata hai? We are talking about organic something like carbohydrates, starch. I may talk about proteins. I may talk about fats. Inorganic, I may talk about minerals. I may talk about vitamins. And I may talk about other different type of substances, ions, radicals, so different type of food may hota hai. So basically we are talking about what are nutrients, chemical substances which are present in the food. <coughs> chemical substances which are present in the food, this is what is known as nutrients. And which are the primary nutrients? Carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Why? Because they are complex. They are complex and they need various different uh, steps or methods for the process of digestion. Carbohydrates, proteins and fats, the moment they enter our body, uh, they need to be broken down to simpler types, unlike the minerals and the vitamin. The mineral and the vitamin nutrients present in the fruits and the green leaves and etc. etc. The moment they are inside our mouth, the process of their entry into our blood vessel starts. But carbohydrate, if I talk about, say suppose I talk about eating a spoon of rice. I talk about potato. potato and then I talk about uh, the wheat and the roti and the bun etc. Now that we eat, uh, does the movement of these nutrient molecules start right from our mouth? No, down there in the intestine. So why not right from the mouth? Because they are so complex in their chemical nature. I talk about the nutrient present in the dal and the rice and the nuts and the grains. So some special acids have been required to break down these uh, substances. Special enzymes, these are called enzymes. 
So now that we are talking about why different type of nutrients, the nutrients like minerals and vitamins can directly or need not follow any digestion. And why nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins need to follow digestion because they are complex. Carbohydrate protein spans are very, very complex, need to be properly digested before they can enter the bloodstream. Then what about vitamins and uh, minerals? No, they are very simple already. Do we, do we have any enzyme in our body to digest minerals? Not at all. Not need. Not need. Then uh, can we name some food items rich in carbohydrates? Just today, we had been talking about the wheat and the rice and the corn. Potato. Potato, mutton, your favorite. Huh? Butter. No, butter comes under fats. Butter does not fats. Proteins, foodstuffs, rich in protein. Eggs. 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 Sprouts. Sprouts. Yes. Milk. Meat. Fish. All Fish. Fish. Pulses. Variety of pulses. Fishes, yes. Fats. Fats, butter. Butter. Cheese. 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 Uh, yogurt. Milk. Milk. Milk also a big source of fat. Potato soup. Potato, potato, potato not fat. It is majorly starch. Uh, carbohydrate, I should say. So what is the first basic concept that you get? The basic concept that you have to understand is what? The basic concept that you have to understand is that when I'm talking about the process of, when I'm talking about digestive system, which may uh, eight concept of digestion ka hona chahiye. Ab digestion ke liye what is necessary? Then uh, let us talk about the word digestion. We are trying to understand digestive system. So what are we uh, studying in this chapter? We'll be talking about digestion. Then what is the meaning of the word digestion? Ab jab these are complex nutrients. The moment we consume them, they have to be broken down into their simpler and simpler forms. And this is what is called digestion. Then what is that? What is digestion? The process of breakdown of the complex food into simpler forms is digestion. So, if break down ke liye kuch to kuch zaruri hota hoga na break down ke liye. If I have to break a uh, boulder into small pieces, uske liye bhi kuch to zarurat hota hai. I want to break a uh, bread into uh, small small chunks. For that also, I have to use my energy and break them, break them, break them. So, whether I talk about a stone or a softer bread piece. If I have to break them into smaller bits, I have to apply some energy, some chemical. So what what is that? What is that factor here that I have to talk about? Inside our body, there are a whole lot of chemical substances, which is constantly breaking down. So now that I talk about uh, enzymes, what are enzymes? Enzymes are special chemical substances which are breaking down the food substances into simpler forms. But I would write here. These are special chemical substances. Uh, these are special chemical substances that breaks down, that chemically actually breaks down, that breaks down the complex nutrients, the complex nutrients into simpler forms. That breaks down the complex nutrients into simpler forms. But I'm saying chemical substances. Now, can this chemical substances bring about physical breakdown? Uh, no. Abhi, yaha pe I'm talking about two types of breakdown. So here, when I talk about this word digestion, remember the word digestion to understand would require two concepts. Digestion can be physical, digestion can be chemical. So what is the meaning of digestion? Physical digestion matlab kya? Physical digestion matlab Physical digestion matlab Just breaking it down into smaller pieces but chemical composition change nahi ho raha hai. Chemical breakdown matlab chemical composition change ho raha hai. So when I'm talking about physical breakdown, say suppose I take an apple, I eat an apple. The big chunk of the apple I am crushing with my teeth. That big chunk of the apple is getting broken down into smaller bits. But shy chemical composition of the change nahi hua hai. So what will I say? This is physical breakdown, physical digestion that is. But ab jab aur thoda der tak.
Digestive system, we divide first of all into alimentary canal. And what is the second? The second would be digestive glands. The second would be digestive glands. We are going to find out some differences between alimentary canal and digestive glands. So first of all, let us try understanding uh, what are the parts of the Elementary canal. What are the parts of the elementary canal? To talk about the parts of the elementary canal, first of all, we have got the mouth. We have got the esophagus. We have got the stomach. Next is we have got the small intestine. 
और क्या है लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन नहीं लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन सो नाउ दैट वी आर टॉकिंग कैनाल सो वट आर दिनाल Elementary canal has got five major parts: the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. And then now that we talk about the digestive glands, which are the ones we talk about the salivary glands. Just know, know the names first. We are talking about the salivary glands. Then we have got the liver, and we have got the pancreas. So, पहले ये नाम समझ में आना चाहिए. What are the names? so ye pura ye to all the structures that we are talking about now comprises the digestive system but now in elementary canal we have eight, eight parts. parts which are the eight parts uh the pharynx and uh the oral cavity but the pharynx if you add also it's okay it is not a very important part to mention because it is only meant for passage of so i already mentioned these are the five major parts i'm talking about which is very very important yes we can add here Between the mouth and the esophagus, we have got the pharynx here. Oral cavity is the mouth itself. Nothing apart from the mouth is the oral cavity. We don't have anything apart from the mouth as the oral cavity. The mouth itself can be known as the oral or the buccal cavity. It's the same thing. Pharynx, yes, we can talk about the pharynx here, but I don't con consider. But when I show you the images, I will show you the pharynx. But pharynx, we don't actually talk about as a major part of the alimentary canal. Now, what is the difference between these two uh, set of structures? What is the difference? The set of structures here that I talk about is a continuous tube-like structure. So now here I am saying that this is a continuous tube. This is a continuous tube-like structure, and in this continuous tube-like structure, the food passes through. This is a continuous tube-like structure, and the food passes through. And in in this entire tube-like structure, um, majorly made up of smooth muscles. This entire tube-like structure is made up of smooth muscles, and this entire tube-like structure shows a particular process known as peristalsis. So, अब जब ये elementary canal के parts हम सीखेंगे, these are some of the concepts that you should understand. That yes, it is a continuous tube-like structure, right? Start from the mouth to the large intestine, and yes, it is the tube-like structure through which the food is passing. The food can pass through. What else? Uh, in this uh, tube-like structure, which is majorly made up of smooth muscles, what else are you supposed to understand? Uh, in this tube-like structure, we are also to come across uh, that the food can pass through, but not only. Uh, how how would the food pass through? The food would generally pass through uh, by specialized process. What is that process called? Peristalsis. What is the meaning of the word peristalsis? The rhythmic contraction. I am showing the process of contraction and relaxation that takes place. The process of contraction and relaxation that takes place all through this tube-like structure, and that is actually allowing the food to keep passing. That is actually allowing the food to keep. Passing. So now that it's not working, it's disconnected. What is it? No, it has come. Economic problems in the world. I just want to skip over that. The very good point of view on economics and everything. But you know, guys, it was. Ah, so this is what we are talking about: the digestive system. The entire is eating an apple. Ah, ah, you eat an apple. No, no. Mama Bruce Brady is like this. Just take it and eat it. You eat it? Yes, I'm very good. Ah, it's bits. Ah, very bits. What? Right. In bits, bits, bits. In bits, you say. In bits, ha. Huh? In bits, say. Pura khali. No, I eat that. Acha pura khali. So, eat it, ha. Tomara digestive system itna kaise specialized hai? Pura aise andar chala jata hai. Bro, ha. Bachi, pura bhot kar do hai bachi. So now, when we are talking about the digestive system, now see here. Look into the entire structure. 
the entire tube like structure that we are talking about. This is the mouth cavity, esophagus, then we have got the stomach here, mm -hmm. the small intestine, and this broad tubular large intestine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that we are talking about the digestive glands, these are the digestive glands. They have salivary glands. Which is the other one? Liver. Which is the other one? Pancreas. Yes. Okay. So now that we are talking about the process of uh, digestion, the process of digestion would involve all these different, the process of digestion would involve the structures now. So I was showing you about the digestive system. Now I'll show you peristalsis also what to understand. Let us now first of all enter into each of these parts to understand their basic function. The first one that we talk about is mouth. We'll come to this word. This is very, very important. You will be asked to write down the definition also. Mouth. Now let us talk about the mouth. What about the mouth here? The mouth is the first part of the alimentary canal. What are some of the important parts, structures present in the mouth? The mouth has got the teeth and the mouth has got the tongue. So these are the two important parts that the mouth has. Uh, but now to understand some parts, function structures of the teeth. Let us try understanding what is the teeth made up of? What's your calcium, 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 calcium and phosphorus. phosphorus. Is the, I'm sorry, is the teeth a bony structure? No. It is not a bony structure at all. But if it is hard, it is only because of the deposits of calcium and phosphorus. Deposits of calcium and phosphorus. So now, this teeth that we are talking about, the teeth that we are talking about, which is a deposit of calcium and phosphorus. So talk, talk about the mammalian teeth characteristics. Certain words we are supposed <laughs> to understand. First, I would write that the teeth is heterodont. Uh, the mammalian teeth, the human teeth is heterodont. What is the meaning of heterodont? Different That's types. Different. We have got different types of teeth. What are the different types? Incisors, canines, premolars, molars. Four types of teeth we have got. So here with this, heterodont types of teeth, when I talk about incisors are one type, we talk about canines as another, we talk about premolars as one, and we talk about molars as another. So now that we are talking about incisors, canines, premolars, molars, you are also one mark mark, you are asked to write down their functions. Let us just discuss their functions. Uh, incisors, when I talk about uh, incisors, remember what are their functions? Incisors, cutting, cutting is their function, biting, cutting. What about canines? Tearing. Did you ever use your canine for eating food at, at times? Yes. When? While meeting, uh, while meat. eating meat, meat. Yeah. while eating meat, or uh, say suppose if the pizza is too hard, no, pull it, pull it, pull it. Sometimes the paratha becomes too hard, my paratha sometimes becomes harder. So at that time we have to use our canines also. Canines. So now that when we are talking about, yes, there are some, but then is our canines so powerful like those of the carnivorous animals? No, no, no. because especially the flesh eaters will always have canines sharp and pointy. Tearing, premolars and molars are basically meant for? Grinding, 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 Function, you will be asked for one one mark. Incisors, canines, premolars, molars. Now, the next concept that we try to understand would be. I know you know for functional molars is also the same as premolars. Same thing, grinding. It is only meant for grinding. So now, when we are talking about, see here, when we are talking about the arrangement of the teeth that we have, this is the upper jaw. Hmm. This is the lower jaw. But then the arrangement of the teeth is the same in the upper and the lower jaw. The number of incisors in the upper and the lower same. Canines upper and lower same. Premolars upper and lower same. Molars upper and lower same. So now, when we are talking about uh, a concept of the upper and the lower jaw. See here, I'm talking about the molars, premolars, canines, incisors. Okay. So in this respect, we also have to understand something known as the dental formula. What is dental formula? Dental formula is the number of teeth in one half of the jaw. Number of teeth in one half of the jaw. In one half of the jaw. That may be the upper or the lower. That means I am talking about that this is the upper jaw, this is the lower jaw. So in one half of the jaw, how many teeth? That is what we are trying to understand. But 
let me talk about three primary stages of our life what are the three primary stages of our life i may talk about infant i may talk about adolescent adolescent stages and i may talk about the adult stage who is an infant here hai koi infant yahan pe hai hai koi adolescent yahan pe yes yes who is that huh Who is, who is that adolescent here? All are students. We all are students. And who is an adult here? I'm you. Know, I'm an infant. Huh? So now, when we are talking about the infant, the adolescent, and the adult, three primary stages of our life. And are there any changes in the dental formula? Little bit. There are changes in the dental formula. So what I said? What is the dental formula? The number of teeth per type. in one half of the jaw and that will be the same here also here also here also. so let us see how to write down infant when i talk about it is 2 1 uh infant is 2 1 2 0 and 2 what is the meaning incisors incisors 9 0 molars and 2 molars in the upper jaw and now we write 2 1 0 2 Lower jaw. Meaning, I am writing down what is here and what is here. So, what is here? Now, how 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 many it comes to? How many it comes to? Five. five. How many it comes to? Five. five. So here I got five. Here also it will be the same. I told you. I told you five here. So here also it becomes five. So I am talking about the infant set now. So then, how many is the total number of teeth? Twenty. Twenty. How many total number of teeth? Twenty. So, what is the total number of teeth in an infant? Twenty. Milk teeth. Which type of milk teeth? Milk teeth. Okay, milk dentition it is called. Milk dentition. Dental teeth. Now, how many teeth in the upper jaw? If that's a question, what to write? <coughs> how many teeth in the upper jaw? <coughs> Ten. How many teeth in the lower jaw? <coughs> Ten. A total of twenty. And all is enough. I talk about two. One, two, no, two, two. I'm sorry. Two, one, two, 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 one, two, two. How many in the upper jaw? What should I write? How many in the upper jaw? How many in the upper jaw? Forty. 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 I should be write forty now. Yes. And then total should be what? Twenty-eight. And for adult. Now for adults, I have to write. For adults, what I write? Two, one, two, three. Two, one, two, three. How many in the upper jaw? Sixty. Sixty. How many in the lower jaw? Sixty. And a total of thirty-two. So now that we are talking about, where are the differences? We talk about the infant set, adolescent, and adult stages i want all of you to write down this on your own in the notebook dekho dekh dekh ke copy nahi karna hai ek bar dekho and then samajh ke likho you are always asked at least one question on this in your exam write down the dental formula of an adult write down the dental formula of an infant so that you should understand what is the difference Dental formula. What does that mean? Now, next is this will be 
need to know about the structure of the uh, uh, tooth, individual tooth also a little bit you have to understand. But first of all, we already said that heterodont tooth. Heterodont means what? Now let us also learn one more word related with the structure of the tooth that we are talking about. The next word that we try understanding would be thecodont tooth. What is the meaning of thecodont tooth? Uh, the tooth embedded in sockets. The tooth embedded in sockets. Is it the same thing for us? Yes. When we are talking about the tooth, every single tooth that we have, which is embedded in sockets. Now we have got the jaw, which is bony. The jaw is covered by the fleshy gum, the muscular structure, the gum. And if you look into, say, suppose sometime if it only had a uh, senior parent uprooting the tooth, or if at all you have seen the structures of that way, or some images, uh, what happens? If at all one of our tooth is uprooted, what do we get to see? There's a cavity left in the jaw. That means the tooth that we have is as if just fit into a cavity, which gets tightened. It is not fused with the bone here that we have. It is just like a lock and key mechanism. Understood. So that type of a, that is the nature of the tooth that we have and this is what is called thicodont. What is the next term that we'll understand? Diphyodont. What is the meaning of diphyodont? Two sets of teeth in our lifetime. How many sets of teeth? Two sets of teeth in our lifetime. Two sets of teeth in our lifetime. So now that we are talking about two sets of teeth in our lifetime, uh, what about this? What are the two sets of teeth that we have in our lifetime? One is known as milk dentition or deciduous dentition. Or I can say temporary dentition also. So now this is known as milk dentition or deciduous. Milk dentition or deciduous dentition. And next is we are talking about uh, the permanent dentition. We are talking about permanent dentition. Okay. Milk dentition or deciduous dentition. And then we are talking about permanent dentition. Okay. So two types of teeth that we understand. Milk dentition. Now when does milk dentition develop or deciduous dentition? Right after uh, any individual is something around seven months. You know, when we are something around five months, six months, seven months roughly. Six to seven months roughly when an individual, then the process of teeth developing starts. And by the time an individual is almost about, by the time an individual is almost about six years, six to seven years, what happens? Now the milk dentition one by one starts falling off. And by the time an individual is again roughly around 10 years, almost the second set of teeth is almost getting formed. No? By 10 to 12 years, the second set of teeth again starts getting formed. So now that we are talking about uh, diphyodont. What is the meaning of diphyodont? Diphyodont means two sets of teeth all throughout our life. What are the two sets of teeth? Milk dentition or deciduous dentition and permanent dentition. Okay, permanent dentition. Now, next is we'll just roughly look into the structure of a tooth. Let us look into the structure of a tooth. How exactly the structure of a tooth appears? Look here. Now, this is how exactly that structure. Now, you have got a similar diagram in your book also. Take that diagram. Now, I'm not asking you to draw that diagram, but <coughs> practice though. Roughly, you are asked to draw also sometimes this diagram. Take that diagram, the same that I'm showing you here. Take it. You may sometimes get for drawing also for two marks. Okay? So, roughly, simple diagram, not a very decorative and artistic diagram that you have to draw. A rough diagram. What are the parts now? See here. I talk about the structure of the teeth. When we look at the structure of the teeth, see here, that is the more clear one. In this entire structure of the teeth, what we get to see is a small part, <coughs> which is known as the crown, the part of the tooth which is above the gum, crown. And a major part is below the gum, embedded. Major part is below the gum. Now, above the gum, two primary parts, what we get to see is which one, the, 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 the part of the uh, teeth that we get to see is actually the enamel. enamel. The white part of the teeth that we get to see is the enamel. And which is also a very hard layer. But below the enamel is another hard layer known as the dentine, which is roughly a bit slightly yellowish actually. And that is known as the 
then time, which is the hardest enamel. Ah, enamel is the hardest. So now that we are talking about the dentine, the dentine and the enamel both are the hard layers of the tooth. Simple deposits of calcium and phosphorus. Not bony at all. They are not bony at all. Deeper inside. And dentine is actually also stronger than both or less than enamel. Enamel. So when we are talking about inner now, there are inner parts to talk about. Inner parts to talk about. What are the inner parts we get to see? The inner region of the tooth, when we get to see, is comparatively softer. There is a cemented layer. This is a cemented layer very close to the gum, which gives a grip and helps in holding the tooth to the gum. The cemented layer, this is called. And the inner region is a little bit softer with some matrix substances and a whole lot of blood vessels and nerves. And this inner region, which has got a whole lot of blood vessels and nerves, is known as the pulp. And the space which contains the pulp is known as the pulp cavity. So inside the pulp, there is a whole lot of blood vessels and nerves. And that is why we understand whenever there is a damage happening on the tooth, or if the tooth is getting extracted, there is bleeding. Bleeding is there. Or if you happen to uh, prick or if you go to the dentist and they keep on no treating the tooth and cleaning the tooth, blood comes out because the blood vessels are disturbed. If there is a, or if somebody is, or he says, so say, suppose you go to the dentist and then they have got so many tools to know, check whether your tooth is in good condition. So they have got those small, small spatula and the hammer sort of thing, and then they would put it, you no know, tap, tap, tap. Do you get to uh, sense anything? Yes. Is there yes. any pain? It is. Yeah. Why? Because the, the inner region of the tooth has got a large number of nerve supply. That's why. So here, you are going to understand this basic structure, nothing much in detail. What are the parts? Then time in a sequence, you will be given this diagram, mostly not to draw, but sometimes you get to draw also. So that's why I told you, I'm not taking it as a class because it's not so very important for drawing, but sometimes you get also, in some schools you get also. So that's why roughly diagram draw, but labeling can be, of course you should be prepared. So what is the outermost enamel, yeah. then time? What is this region called? No. You know, the neck. No. This region is also called the neck. The junction of the crown and the root. This entire region is called the root. This entire region is called the crown. And the junction of the crown and the uh, uh, root is called the neck. So remember when the parts are asked to label. The gun you understand, the jawbone, the cemented layer, the thick, uh, uh, the, the thick uh, hard layer, and then the nerve supply and the blood vessels. So this is, that is a part of the teeth. And also jawbone here. Where's that? Jawbone. Jawbone is a side, the side structure, that if this is the cavity, where the tooth is uh, uh, lodged, embedded, then the side region is the jaw. Then again, there will be depression for the next tooth. So this part is the jaw. Then again, there will be another depression for the next tooth. Then again, the jaw. Again, depression for the next tooth. It's like that. So jawbone has got a large number of depressions, dents are there. And in those dents, the teeth are uh, embedded. Lost. Okay, the structure is this way. So this is about the structure that we have to understand. Now, okay, we are yet to talk about all this. Now, next is we look into the next part. Tongue. When we talk about the tongue, what is the tongue? A muscular structure. What type of muscles? The tongue is majorly made up of voluntary muscles. Skeletal muscles. Voluntary muscles. So now that I talk about the tongue, uh, what is the tongue made up of? I said the tongue is muscular and it is made up of uh, muscles. Uh, so what would be the major function to understand? Uh, it is a muscular structure and what does it contain? It contains taste buds. So when we are talking about a whole lot of uh, structures it has got known as the taste buds also. It has got the taste buds. So now that we are talking about uh, the tongue, Okay, now that we are talking about the tongue, it has got the taste buds. Uh, the next is, uh, we are talking about uh, the tongue, function of the tongue with reference to digestion now. That is what you are asked also for two marks, three marks. Let us try to understand some functions of the tongue with reference to digestion. Let us check. What are some of the functions of the tongue with reference to digestion? Placing the food between the jaw. Placing the food between the sets of teeth. Between the sets of teeth. Yes or no? 
Is the tongue helping in the process of chewing the food? Does the tongue help in the process of chewing the food? Did you ever did you ever realize that? No. Itne saalo se khana kha rahe ho par kabhi pata hi nahi chala. Does the tongue help in the process of chewing the food? Yes, yes sir. If you hold your tongue, can you chew your food? No, no. no because your food will just remain at one location inside the mouth cavity. But chewing means what? From time to time, just like a machine, your food should move between the sets of teeth. Then only the grinding. Then only the chewing. So remember, ab jab aaj jab dinner khaoge, then realize that every time our tongue is actually placing the food between the sets of teeth, and that's how the grinding is happening. Can you tell me one more function of the teeth? Uh, one more function of the tongue? As is speaking. That is not the uh, this one. Uh, digestive function. It helps in the swallowing of the food. Yes or no? Yes. Does it help? So again, if you hold your tongue, can you swallow? Can you gulp down the food? You cannot. Not even a sip of. Not even a sip of water. It will not gulp down because if I talk about this particular region, which is known as the palate, the little roof of the mouth, the mouth cavity, what is it? This roof is known as the palate. If you roll your tongue. Roll your tongue and check for yourself. Roll your tongue and check for yourself. First is the hard part, known as the hard palate, and then go a little bit inner, and then you will see you will be feeling this softer muscle, which is known as a soft palate. So the food is actually moving till that region, and the tongue pushes, and it enters into the esophagus. So can we talk about swallowing of the food? Yes, swallowing of the food is another one. Uh, what is the other function of the tongue with reference to digestion? Sensation of the taste. Sensation of the taste. Uh, so when we are talking about sensation of the taste and taste buds, these are also with reference to digestion. Can we write here speaking? We should not write here speaking. Though speaking is also a function of the tongue, but it is not a function of the tongue with reference to digestion. Speaking के साथ digestion का कोई relation नहीं है. So we are done with the structures of uh, the parts and structures of the mouth. The next thing we are going to continue with esophagus. We do do question. I mean, after we are now going to see how we can do that. अच्छा अच्छा तो मेरे लिए 